Articlet has recently added three new built-in variables to Articlet Storyline 360, the elapsed time variables. And with the elapsed time variables, you can create new cool interactions. Now, in this video, I'll show you where you can find the elapsed time variables, how they work, and I'll show you three practical examples as the inspiration for your next e-learning course. So let's get started. Articulate has recently added three new built-in variables to Storyline 360, elapsed time variables. Now, these variables gives you lots of new possibilities for timed interactions in Storyline 360. And in this video, I'll show you where you can find the variables, how they work, and I'll also show you three practical examples as inspiration to use elapsed time variables in your next course. So let's get started. Now let's see where you can find the elapsed time variables in Storyline 360 and how you can add them to your project. Now as mentioned in my intro, elapsed time variables are built in Storyline variables. So let's open the Manage Project Variables option and you'll see a new screen opens and you'll see now two tabs. Now on the Project Variable tabs, you will find all the variables that you created yourself in this project. Now, in this case, none for now. And here on the second tab, we have all the built-in variables. Now, it's quite a list, so let's use the search bar in the top of the variable screen. For what I'll do, I'll type EL, and you'll see I have now the three uh, elapsed time variables. There's a elapsed time variable for your whole project, uh, for a particular scene, or for a particular slide. And now we know where we can find the elapsed time variables, let's add them to our project. Now, let's close the variable window, and I have already created the slide with three text fields and I want to add the elapsed time variables under each text field. Now there are two options to do this in Article Storyline. The first option is to create a text field and type the name of the variable with in percentage signs. But there is a second and I think much easier method by adding a variable re reference to your slide. So to add a reference, the first thing is to add a new text box. So therefore I go to insert create text box and I draw a text box on my slide. The next step is to go to insert again and go to reference. You see here we have the manage project variables window. I tip, type in EL and I'll select my slide dot elapsed time variable and click on OK. And now Storyline has automatically added the reference to the slide elapsed time variable in the text box. So I'll make the font size a little bit smaller so it fits on one line. And what I'll do now is I'll add it for the other two uh, variables. I created for the first variable, I created the text field through the insert tab. What you also can do is press Ctrl T on your keyboard and Storyline adds a text field. And now you can go to insert reference. I type EL and select the scene elapsed time variable. And now I will also create a elapsed time variable for my whole course. So I added the last reference to the project elapsed time variable. And what I did, I copied this slide here in this scene and also created a new scene. So now let's preview this course and see how the elapsed time variables work. So now we're in preview mode and maybe you see something you didn't expect because instead of seconds adding up, you see many numbers increasing really quickly. What Storyline does is it counts the time in milliseconds. So where a thousand milliseconds are one second. So this is something that you have to keep in mind when creating triggers. And if you want that something happens after, for instance, five seconds, you have to fill in 5,000 milliseconds in your trigger. Now I added a link to a millisecond converter in the video description below to make it easier for you. Now let's jump to the next slide and see what happens. So I jump to my next slide and you'll see the elapsed time variable for slide uh, is set to zero and counts again. Now, this is my last slide of the scene. So let's click to the next scene. You see now the elapsed time variable for the slide is set to zero and it's adding up again, but also the elapsed time variable for the scene is set to zero and is adding up again. And the elapsed time variable for the course will run again. Now that you know how to add elapsed time variables and that Storyline tracks the elapsed time variables in milliseconds, I'll show you three examples of how elapsed time variables work in practice. So the first interaction that I want to show you where I used elapsed time variables is this interaction where you must guess which animal is hidden behind rectangles. Now, I've created 19 rectangles and let me show you which animal is hidden. Here it's an elephant. 
Now, and the 19 rectangles uh, appear mixed one by one, and so you can uh, guess which animal you see. Now, rectangle 6 is the first rectangle that will be hidden, and let's check this trigger. So here, trigger says change state of rectangle 6 to hidden, and when the variable changes, slide elapse time. If slide elapse time is larger than two and a half thousand, so this means after two and a half seconds, the first rectangle, rectangle six, six will uh, be hidden by articulate storyline, and after five seconds, this rectangle will be hidden, then this rectangle, and so on and so on. Now let's check. Uh, in the preview mode, how this works in practice. So we're now in preview mode, and you'll see after two and a half seconds, our first rectangle appear, disappears, then the second, the third one, the fourth one, and so on, and so on. Now, this is the first interaction that I want to show you. Now let's go to my second interaction. So this is my second interaction that I want to show you. I have here a multiple choice question with a hint. So if a user doesn't uh, know the answer, he gets a hint after 10 seconds. Now let me show you how I set up this interaction. So what I've done is I created a hint layer and I created two uh, triggers and a custom variable. So I created the custom variable, a true false variable reach 10 seconds and I've used them in my triggers. So let's show the first trigger that says set the custom variable reach 10 seconds to true and when should this happen when the variable changes slide elapsed time and if slide elapsed time is greater than 10,000 so that may, means after 10 seconds the reached 10 seconds variable is set to true and now let me show you the second trigger this will show the hint layer now the hint layer will be shown when the variable reach 10 seconds changes uh, and when does it changes it must change to true so then is the layer is shown and this was my second example now let's look at my third example now this is my third and last example now, what i want to show you here is that you can also use the elapsed time variables for instance for the project to uh, complete a project after for instance 10 seconds so what i've already done here is i created a new variable that says reached 10 seconds and I created a trigger that set, says set reach 10 seconds to true when the project elapse time variable changes and if project elapse time variable is greater than 60,000. So this means after 10 minutes, reach 10 minutes will be set to true. Now, if we create a new trigger, we set complete course and not when start, but when variable changes and we use the 10 minutes and here we say, when 10 minutes is set to true. So what we've done here with this trigger is that the uh, articulate storyline will uh, pass the course completed to your LMS when the variable reach 10 minutes changes to the uh, contents of true. Now I hope the new video about elapsed time variables in articulate storyline was useful to you. If so, then feel free to hit the like button under this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Now, see you next time in my next video. Bye!